Okay, well, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about our digital design post back program. And thank you again so much for joining us. I am the program director for digital design program here at Tulane School of Professional Advancement. We also have Rebecca Carr, who is our professor of practice, and um, you may come in contact with her during your application process as well. So I want to start by telling you just a little bit about Tulane SOPA. So Tulane was founded in 1834 as the Medical College of Louisiana. Tulane offered its first continuing education classes in 1886. That was demonstrating a commitment to our adult learners. Um, and that has lasted for over 130 years. Um, our program of digital design has adult learners as well as traditional um, students straight out of high school. We, we work with both of those age groups. Um, but our mission for SOPA, our School of Professional Advancement, really is on that lifelong learning uh, for adult learners. So the way that you can engage with our program is really four different ways. Um, first is you can take exclusively online courses. So we have some classes that are 100% online. Um, you can take them at your own leisure. Um, there are some synchronous sessions might zoom in with your faculty member, but these are 100% online. We also have our on campus on ground classes as well. And this goes for our post back as well as our bachelor's programs. And so for our on campus courses, they are going to be in three brand new state of the art labs. Uh, we have one lab for each of our three tracks, although we do sort of cross over a little bit, but we do have a graphic design lab, an interactive design lab, and a game art and animation lab. And each of these labs is fully equipped with the workforce ready technology that you're going to need and should be expected to use after graduation. Um, additionally, we have something brand new that we're launching this fall, and it is what we call our compound classroom. So this is a brand new model that we're developing exclusively here at Tulane, and we're calling it our CELL, and that stands for a Creative Engaged Learning Lab. And the great thing about this is that we're going to have some in-person students, as well as some online students, all attending synchronous sessions at the same time every week. So what we've discovered is that there are some pain points in design education 100% online. And so we're solving that with this new cell model. And I'll send you guys a link after this to learn more in our follow-up emails. Then we also have daytime classes, nighttime classes, as well as available weekend Saturday morning classes. And so we're hoping that that allows for flexibility with your work-life balance. Um, our classes in the evenings do start between 5.30 to 6 p.m. so that you're able to get there after work and still maintain a full-time job. Although, like I said, we do have our traditional daytime classes as well. So for our program of study of digital design, we are really bridging the gap between art and technology. So we are providing you with hyper-creative problem-solving skill sets, really taking you all the way from developing your research to your concept, taking you for the, through those four C's of the design process developing your concept, understanding how it relates to culture, creating all of those components that you're going to need, and then laying that out in the composition. So we're really looking at building your design portfolio. All of the studios that you're going to take in our program, our ultimate goal is for you to have a really awesome portfolio at graduation to get you that job that you want or to advance in your current career. Um, we, you know, in all of our three tracks that you've heard us talk about and probably seen on our website, all of our faculty members members are aligned with that same mission of building that portfolio. So all the projects within there are going to be projects that you would want to include in a portfolio. Some are going to be case studies, others will be like real life projects where we're working with what's called service learning directly with um, different need, um, different organizations and small businesses that are in need within our community. So what is a post baccalaureate certificate? So this is a question that we get a lot. So you'll see that abbreviation as a post bac. So this means that you already have a bac or bachelor's, right? So post bac is just a post bachelor's degree. Um, so you'll be able to receive a certificate 
um, which is 10 courses. So if you have an undergraduate degree in an area, it does not have to be a design field. It doesn't have to be in gaming or graphic design or marketing, anything like that. Um, we have students that come into our post back certificates from all over. We have students that may have been a professional chef they may have been an educator. We have a couple actually I can think of in our program right now who were educators. We have a couple of English teachers, um, art teachers. Uh, we've had people come from all kinds of fun fields that are completely unrelated seemingly to design. And so they realized that there was this passion that they've had that they wanted to pursue. And so we're able to fill that void for them. So the post back really, once again, if you have your bachelor's degree, this is a certificate that will allow you to really gain a deep understanding. You're going to have 10 courses. So that's a lot. That's great. So it's 30 credit hours because each course is worth three credits. And so it's a 10 credit certificate and you can do a deep dive into either graphic design, interactive UX UI design, or game art and animation. Or if you want to kind of marry two of those certificates, we can create something customized for you. So we have, just in case you're interested, also a Bachelor of Arts. Um, the reason I wanted to bring this up in this webinar is because we have some students that come to us, the intention of receiving a post back, but realize that they want to take more courses. They fell in love kind of with our faculty and our students and our environment, and they want to keep going. And so um, I just wanted to point out that you could also earn a second bachelor's degree. We can take up to 60 credit hours from your former institution, so we can't guarantee Team, we can take all 60, but if it's an accredited institution and um, their courses align with our courses and we can articulate those, um, you can receive up to 60 credits from your previous institution. So I know that it's a 30 hour um, versus a 60 hour, right? So um, you could actually, um, you know, get another bachelor's degree, which would be really great. And that gives you the additional time to really hone those skill sets, build your portfolio, take classes and other tracks. So that's just an option. If you're interested in doing a traditional bachelor's degree, let's say you're watching this webinar and you don't have a bachelor's degree, our overall bachelor's is 120 credit hours. Um, and then also 42 of those credits are within your major concentration. So the rest of them are within your core classes. Um, and we can give you more information on courses look like on our website. And then also after you apply and are accepted, you'll work with Ms. Brittany Yandel, who's on this call as well. And she will be your academic advisor who will take you through all of those requirements. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about each track um, and just give you a little bit of insights into what each track is and what to expect. So for our graphic design track, um, what is graphic design, right? So we're looking at careers in branding, print design, poster design, book design, typography, which is lettering and typefaces, publication, which really is um, for books, magazines, etc., cetera, uh, front end web and interactive design, as well as many others. Here are some courses that you could expect to take. So everything from your foundations courses to your imaging, your illustration, your typography. We also have our history of graphic design. We have our interactive studios. We have a 2D class, a 3D class. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We also have our hand letterpress classes. And then over on the right hand side here, you're going to see um, some work from some of our amazing students. So over on the right, you're gonna see the top right work is for a client that we worked with um, here in New Orleans and it's a nonprofit and we did this um, invitation design for a celebration. It's actually one in Addy last year. So um, our student, Nicole Macon, she did hand lettering on this really great piece of slate and arranged this really beautiful flat lay photograph. Um, and then on the bottom right, in another one of our courses, this is actually the Design One Studio. Um, Lauren DeBot, she created this Mofalata Festival poster, which is super fun. And this is a hand illustrated um, in uh, Procreate. And uh, just a really, really fun way uh, to represent the huge Mufalata with his hand lettering. Uh, Lauren did a great job. This won a couple of Addies this year. 
Another work um, that I wanted to point out is this really fun invitation for a workshop called Create. So this is done by Kathy Hume and she actually won Best of Show in 2019 at the Addies for this. So she did all this by hand, she scanned it in, she took it into Adobe Illustrator and Procreate and uh, illustrated this completely out. So we also really work on our hand skills, you know, everything from sketching to storyboarding, et cetera, by hand, how to take that into the software and really just use the software as a tool to bring your ideas to life. Some of our faculty um, within this program. So we have myself. Um, I have been a design educator for almost 20 years. I'm also a working designer. A lot of my work is for nonprofits as well as retail and restaurant. Um, we also have Josh Dirtberg. He is the lead animator for In Exile Entertainment, which is a Microsoft company. And what you'll notice with a lot of our faculty is that they are working professionals experts in their specific area of study that they are teaching. So for example, Josh Dirtberg is a lead animator for In Exile. He does that by day and then he teaches our animation classes for us at night. So you are learning from experts working in these fields. Um, then we have Peter who is this amazing motion designer. He teaches our motion design classes which are in Adobe Illustrator as well as Adobe Premiere. Um, Samantha Barnes is an award-winning interactive designer, web developer, and social strategist and those are the courses that she teaches. Also have John Carr, who has been a copywriter for more than 20 years. Um, he teaches our online copywriting studios. Uh, Jessica Peterson, she owns the Southern Letterpress here in New Orleans, and um, she teaches all of our letterpress classes. We also have Rebecca Carr, who's an award-winning educator and designer. She does a ton of print design and print layout work as well as Aisha Champagne, and she's a senior graphic designer here at Tulane, actually, and she teaches our publication um, and editorial classes. Um, additional work that you'll see within the graphic design track, um, we, this is pack, a packaging class as well as branding um, that we have done. And um, this is Corey Guerra, and he actually won um, some really great uh, Addies last year for this. Um, so they had to create branding for a fictional, they had to make up a fictional coffee shop. And so he chose a coffee shop for cyclists called Bunny Hop. And he developed this logo and some really fun packaging pieces. So for our interactive design track, um, Marcy, if you want to put into um, the chat, let me know what track that you're interested in. And I can talk more about that too. Um, so for our interactive design track, um, we are looking at app design, UX UI design. Um, you're going to be looking at classes such as foundations of interactive design, typography studio. Um, you're going to learn about Adobe Premiere, After Effects. You're going to have multimedia studios, digital narrative studios, motion one and two. And within this, you're going to be using app prototyping. So you're not going to be coding on the back end, but you're going to be really working with the front end of app uh, prototyping software as well as web prototyping software. So over here on the right, um, you will see an app that was designed by student Tamsin Jenkins called Smitten. And it's a pairing app for people seeking pets and um, people who are foster, who want to foster animals and or have you adopt animals. And so shelters can load uh, pets on there and then you can create a profile and find pets. So it's a really fun matchmaking website for animals and pet lovers. Um, this is an app designed by Hannah Gregory, and this is called Winely. And so Hannah wanted to create an app that um, helped take us through the wine tasting process in a very user-friendly way. So one of the prompts for these uh, apps that you're seeing here was to take a real-world problem and solve it with an app. So Hannah's real-world problem was that she just didn't get it. When people said, do you taste strawberry? Do you taste cherry? She didn't get it. So she wanted to work with the sommelier that she knows and actually create an app that takes you through that wine tasting process. So it's a really fun, fun app. This is another work by Hannah Gregory, actually. This is a web app for uh, Molam, which is a concept for a restaurant that she came up with. And so you'll notice here that Hannah combined 
um, all types of projects within this one website. So she created the logo, she created the branding, she created the web, the web app. She created these great icons, right? She found the photography, I'm sure, and edited. So she's taking skills that she's learned in a multitude of courses and bringing it in to these major projects. So that is where we want you to be by your junior and senior year, is taking everything that you've learned in your branding classes, your illustration classes, your layout classes, putting those all into these big projects in your multimedia and your upper level studios. Um, this is an app for coffee lovers um, who um, want to understand how to brew coffee using things like the Chemex and other fun brewing techniques other than a traditional coffee maker. And so Grady Bell, this won a ton of Addies in 2019 um, for this app. So he's able to, he's using Stumptown, which is a local um, coffee, um, coffee roaster here in New Orleans. And he created this really amazing um, app for coffee lovers, it tracks what you're using, uh, et cetera. Really, really fun. Okay, so those are our two tracks that um, you can really dig into for our post-bac degrees. Um, so let's talk more about our student experience. So beyond the classroom, we are very much um, involved in our local industry, our local workforce. Um, we uh, have an AIGA membership here um, for our students. So we have a student chapter of the AIGA, which we feel is so important um, for our students. Um, we are part of the American Advertising Federation, which is our ad club New Orleans, and they host our um, regional, district, and national Addy Awards every year. We also like to bring on very notable designers. Um, we have Chip Kidd, who's going to be coming in the fall. If you don't know Chip Kidd, you should definitely Google him. Uh, he's the one who did the original Jurassic Park um, book cover, book jacket, etc. Um, so we have different designers like Chip, et cetera, come down every year and give fabulous talks. Um, we've had people like James Vittori, Tyler Barnes, et cetera, Jessica Hish uh, come down just in the last couple of years. So for student supporting success, um, we really pride ourselves on that at SOPA. We want to make sure that you're successful and that you finish your degree here and that you graduate and get an amazing job. Um, and that's really important to us. And so we put a lot of student success uh, benchmarks in place. So academic advisors, um, we have a whole team of academic advising. Uh, Brittany Andel is on the call today. Everybody say hi to Brittany. <laughs> so Brittany is here and she will be your academic advisor. So what that means is after you're enrolled, in the program, you've been accepted, uh, you will work with Brittany to make sure to map out all of your core classes if you're doing your BA. And she can also help connect you with me and guide you through your post back um, as well. And so we will both help keep you on track to make sure you know which classes to take in which order and that you're completing it uh, and that you're able to graduate on time. Um, we also have, like I mentioned earlier, our expert faculty. And they have, of course, all of that amazing industry expertise and can help plug you in, get you internships, get you jobs, help find you jobs after um, graduation, which is super important. Um, we also have our career advisor who is great with career advice, um, Cynthia Washington, and she is on our staff for our school only for SOPA. So she is excellent at helping you find those internships, find job placement, helping you like work on your interviewing skills, building your resume, all those things. Um, and of course, our professional um, network of Tulane graduates and peers. So after saying all of that, um, applying is super easy. Um, it's apply.sopa um, or sopa.tulane.edu forward slash apply. Um, basically, you're just going to complete the application with all of your information. Um, there is a $40 application fee. However, we were going to waive that because you attended this webinar today. Um, you just need to have a clear photo ID, a government issued ID. That can be like a passport or a valid driver's license or a military ID. And then we also need your official transcripts sent over to us. Um, this could be at, for your back, if you're going to do the post back, we need to have a copy of your bachelor's uh, transcripts. If you're getting the bachelor's degree, we still need anything else that you've, you've done, whether it's an associate's or another bachelor's or any, any other degree that you've received or your high school transcript if you're coming directly out of high school. So um, we need those sent over to us and all that information is on the application page how to do that. 
So these are our deadlines coming up. So if you're looking at starting in the summer, uh, May 15th is the deadline, right? So um, you want to make sure you work ahead of that just a little bit. It does take a little while, just so you know, for your uh, transcripts to get sent over to us. So we want to make sure we're working ahead of that May 15th deadline to get you in the system and get you registered so you actually get in the classes that you want. So I would definitely recommend you know, early May, you've gotten everything submitted. So that way we can work on getting you registered. If you're looking at starting in fall, that date's August 15th, same thing, just work ahead of that. You know, fall classes um, fill up pretty quickly. So if you want to start working on that application now for fall, um, we can make sure we get you in the pipeline, get you accepted, all those things. And um, we can make sure that you get the classes you need. Um, we do have financial aid, just like any other program that you would be entering. Um, you're going to want to fill out the FAFSA form online, and that's for undergraduate, post -bac, and graduate programs. You're eligible. Um, for our tuition cost, it's $476 uh, for this summer, and then we do have a tuition increase starting in the fall of $524 per credit. So our classes are three credits each, so just multiply that times three, and that's how much each class costs. Um, we do have this amazing um, tuition calculator on our website. If you go to our SOPA website, uh, sopa.tulane.edu, and look for the tuition calculator or just like put it in the search bar, um, it will help you calculate exactly how much your tuition will be each semester based on how many classes you want to take. So it's super great. Once again, obviously financial aid is available, uh, grants, loans. Also, we have a 20% discount for active duty military veterans, teachers, and first responders. So check all of that out if you're eligible. And if you have any questions on financial aid, super easy, just email me and uh, I'll give you my info on the last slide here and I can connect you with the right, right people. We also have something lastly called credits for prior learning. So if you have been working in the field for a long time, if you have another degree, that maybe those classes don't specifically um, articulate to our requirements, um, you can earn, if you're getting the bachelor's degree, up to 24 credits. So this is for bachelor's only and or master's. So that it does not count toward the post back. But if you are receiving your bachelor's, and you do have professional experience, there is a way that you can actually earn credits. And just ask us about that um, once, if you have any questions and we can help walk you through that process. So you can contact Sheila Gold, who is our um, admissions director, and she can give you more information. That's her number. Um, you can also, I'll put my email address over here in the chat and I can answer any questions like programmatically that you may have specifically for digital design or how to move through the process, um, how to start your application, that sort of thing. And I'll just give it a minute over at the bottom of your screen. If you hover over, you'll see the little chat box. If anybody has any questions, feel free to enter them into the chat box, anything that I can answer for you. I'll just give it a second. Okay, great. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now. So thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you all are staying well and healthy and uh, having a good time at home <laughs> like we all are. And uh, we'll hope to hear from you soon and hope to see your application come in. And once again, please reach out with any questions that you might have. Thanks so much.